So really in this unit, we're going to focus on congruent triangles, but we're going to start by talking about congruent figures. Congruent figures, any two shapes that have the same size and the same shape. You don't need to write what's on the bottom, but I do want to talk about it because this is how textbooks define congruency. They say two figures are not congruent unless you can map a figure onto the other one using a transformation, but we're not going to focus on this, so you don't need to write it, but let me show you how textbooks define congruency. So those two quadrilaterals, they are congruent if I can translate this one and it lands perfectly, maps perfectly onto the other one. So that was a translation, that was a slide. These two are congruent if I can rotate this guy and it perfectly matches up with the other triangle. That's how you define that they are congruent. And then, this one's a little weird. Oops, why do I have this segment tool? Okay, this one's a little weird because it's grouped. Okay, this one I can flip and it should land exactly on the other one. Don't ask why that happened. It, you can't shade in those figures, so I had to like color. It's a long story. So anyways, um, we're going to be talking about congruency this whole unit. But now we need to determine, we know what congruent figures are. How do we determine if figures are congruent? So go ahead and look at these triangles and see if you can just use your instincts to decide which ones are congruent. And then we'll talk about what would we need to check to make sure that they're congruent. So if we really wanted to check for congruency, we would need to make sure that what matched? The angle, a couple sides, all the sides, all the angles, what would we need to check? Which ones do you want me to check? I already know the answer, so it makes it a little bit easier. So you see how if I can do a slide or a flip or a rotate and it lands on that exact shape, then these are for sure congruent. But if I can't, if I can't make them line up, oh no, if I can't make them line up like that, then they are not congruent. So to be congruent, all the sides have to perfectly line up and all the angles have to perfectly line up. So go ahead and write this down. So you're writing this down. Congruent figures, two figures, we're not just talking triangles, we're talking any figures, octagons, trapezoids, whatever they might be. They are congruent if and only if. So this is called a biconditional. If we say if and only if, there are no exceptions to it. Corresponding sides and corresponding angles are congruent. So you can't have most of the sides congruent in their congruent figures. All of the corresponding sides have to be congruent in all the corresponding angles. So if we have a word that shows up twice in our definition, we better know what it means. I don't mean corresponding as in like parallel lines and a transversal. So what I mean when I say corresponding is like if this is A, B, C, and this is D, E, F, I'm saying that angle A would need to match up with angle, you can say it, yes, D, because A corresponds with D. It's not A's job to be congruent to F, right? Those are not corresponding angles. So when we say corresponding, we mean the ones that match up, the ones that go together, the ones that are in corresponding positions. So it would be B's job to match up with E. It would be C's job to be congruent to F. That's what it means when it says corresponding. So this page was not about um, the picture. The picture was there as a visual, but it was not about trying to rotate or flip or turn. And yes, you could. For them to be congruent, you can do multiple transformations to it. This picture was all about this right here. This is called a congruence, congruence statement. And what's awesome about the congruence statement is that it can never lie. So whatever order the letters are in the congruence statement, 
that is the correct order of the letters when you're trying to figure out which ones are corresponding. So when I say which angle corresponds to angle I, you go, oh, that's listed third. Oh, G is listed third, and you don't use the picture at all because that picture had no markings whatsoever. So I really couldn't assume that any angles were congruent other than using the congruence statement. Yes, so y'all already learned this? Awesome. So we'll do one more. So angle T would be congruent to angle A because they're in corresponding positions in the congruence statement. All right, let's look at this one. Segment GA is congruent to segment TI. Is that true or false? Is that correct or incorrect? Let's pretend that they put a segment symbol above it. What do y'all think? Is that okay? Is that true? Because GA is listed third and first, but TI is listed first and then third. Did it have to be IT? No. Good. Okay. So in the congruent statement, the order matters. The order matters. The order matters. But when you're naming a segment, you're naming a collection of points. It doesn't matter if you name it TI or IT. So the order of the segment letters doesn't matter. The order of the congruent statement always matters. So big difference. Are all the rest of them right? RT, second, first, NA, second, first. Good. NG, um, second, third, RI, second, third. Very good. Moving on. So, if I name it UNT, and sorry that the letters got mixed up, U to N to T. So I travel across three tick marks, and then I travel across one tick mark. So here, I need to travel across three tick marks, and then across one tick mark. That's G, E, M, even though the letters got flipped somehow. So Jim is the only correct answer. Remember, the congruence statement has to be in the right order. You can't just write those three letters down. It has to be in the right order. Do we all understand why it's Jim if we accidentally put Meg? It used to spell nutmeg, like the answer, but I was like, that's too obvious, so I moved stuff around. I love it when triangles have arc markings. Arc marks are so much easier than traveling across the tick marks. Arc marks make it so easy. Y, Z, X, look. Two arcs, one arc, three arcs. Two, one, three. So you just go in the same order. Two, one, three. So it's so much easier when they give you angle markings. So we know that we can always trust the congruent statement. We can't always trust a picture. You know our pictures are not always drawn to scale. But we can always trust the congruence statement. So when it says find AB, AB is listed first and second. CD is listed first and second. And so AB is six centimeters because CD is six centimeters. So, awesome. Then it says the measure of angle ABF. The middle letter is always the vertex, so it's really asking for this angle right here. B is listed second. D is listed second. So B and D match. Those are corresponding parts. Those match. I don't know B and I don't know D. But I do know that since E and F are both listed last, F is 85, and then we use triangle... Sum theorem? Yay! Triangle sum theorem. And we get that the measure of angle ABF, or angle B, is 67 degrees. Better? Are we okay, guys? If triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, the measure of angle B is X plus 40, the measure of angle E is 2X minus 10, and the measure of angle D is 40, solve for the missing values. So you know when I use that less than sign, it really means angle. Find X, find angle E, find angle F. Moral of the story, how did you start this problem? Did you add all these up to equal 180? Yes. Yeah. 
Did x plus 40 equals 2x minus 10. Yay! And why are we allowed to do that? Someone else answer. Why? Why can we do that? It says that b is equal to e. Love it! b is listed second, e is listed second, so we're allowed to set them equal to each other. What did x end up being? 50. 50. The measure of angle E was 40, I think. No, what was it? 90. 90. Oh, that was the weird one because it wasn't drawn to scale. E was 90 and F was 50, right? Yep. Because we've got 40 was one angle, 90 was the other angle, so 50 had to be the remaining angle. Cool. All right, last problem of the day. Actually, I want to do this one. Last one before you all have to leave. If Pentagon paint is congruent to Pentagon house, find the false statement. Remember, the congruent statement never lies. It never lies. It never lies. C was the one that is false because AI is listed second, third, and US, oh no. It's listed third and fourth. So remember, what we learned today doesn't just apply to triangles. It applies to any shape. If we can write a congruent statement about it, then the corresponding parts are going to be congruent. And we'll, excuse me, have a whole lesson on that on Friday. Tomorrow we'll get into proving triangles congruent and using shortcuts. And then we'll do proofs. It's going to be an awesome unit. All right, now we've got some weird kind of overlapping sharing partial side triangles. Um, let's start the problem by writing a congruence statement. We have to have been told that they're congruent. Okay, so I'm telling you, these are congruent. Now let's write a statement about them. So if I said triangle FBR is congruent to, go ahead and type what you think FBR is congruent to. Earl, you're right. It's congruent to triangle Earl. So how did we know that? So First of all, B was the right angle, so we knew R went in the middle, right? Because B and R were corresponding. But then we kind of had to reuse one. F is 58 degrees. There's no way it could go with L. It had to go with E. And then we had to use R twice. So we've got E, R, L. Now let's find some missing angles. F, R, B. So what's this angle right here? Well, we've got 90. We've got 58. I don't even have to do triangle sum theorem. I know it's 32 because that angle goes with angle L. They're corresponding, so they're congruent. Um, angle LEB. Well, because the triangles are congruent, I know this angle is 58 because it matches this one. And then I can do linear pair theorem, 122. And then LRF. And yes, I could take the red one and subtract it from 90. So that one was 90. The red one was 32, leaving us back to 58 degrees again. So fun times. Your homework is called congruent figures. So today we're talking about figures that are congruent, and the rest of the unit will only talk about triangles. What is that called right there? It's very congruent statement. Yay, congruent statement.